What's going on, guys? This is Dan Wynn. And Mike Glassby. And welcome to the Military Cash Flow. So today, we've got a pretty cool video. We're going to be talking about residential real estate versus apartments, right? So um, first, let me start by the, the definition, right, of a residential property. Most people, when they hear residential, they're only thinking one single family home, right? Well, the actual definition, residential spans from one single family home all the way to four units, right? So anything up to four units is a residential uh, residential home. And then we have apartments. Mike, you want to touch on that? Yep. So anything up to four units under one roof is your residential, whereas apartments is technically anything five units or above. Now, uh, one key thing that you guys want to be able to delineate from is many people will call this commercial real estate. But as you're aware, commercial can, can entail uh, retail, industrial, warehouses, all this good stuff. And so although apartments are considered a commercial asset, because people actually live inside them, it is still residential. So for the sake of today's conversation, when we're saying residential, it'll be four units and below under one roof, and anything five units and above will be apartments. All right. And with that, we're first going to start talking about the residential. We're going to talk about the pros of residential, and then we're going to go into the pros of apartments. We're not going to really touch on the cons because if you think about it, the pros of one are pretty much the cons of the other. So uh, with that said, going into residential, the first thing is that they're relatively cheap, right? So when you talk about um, residential units, especially if you're talking about uh, around army bases, right? Because the army base likes our army likes to, uh, to have their bases in the middle of nowhere, right? Where nobody else wants to live, right? So typically the real estate there is cheaper. So for the most, for, I would say for the average service member, depending on the area, right? Uh, for the most part, you're probably paying somewhere under 300K for an asset, right? Uh, whereas apartment complexes, you might, you can easily pay well over, well over a million dollars and, and, and much, much higher for, uh, for, those air, for those apartments. Um, and again, that's depending on your area. But like I said, relatively, uh, they're relatively cheap, uh, the residential units. Number two, they are easier to self-manage, right? So you have a lot less to deal with when, when it comes to the residential properties. So you typically only have maybe one tenant or maybe four tenants. So you have less expenses with those, with those tenants that you do have to manage. Um, and it's just a lot easier to self-manage. You don't have to to worry about thirty collecting rent from thirty or forty different people. It's easy for them to you know just pass you the rent, and you keep tabs on those four uh, those four people or those three people if you're living in the unit. And I think uh, one of those old uh, leadership adages, right? Uh, you can pretty much only effectively manage one to three people, I believe. Um, anything outside of that, you need to hire out. So um, that all that all kind of goes together with it's easier to self-manage. Yep. And so uh, along with the self-management aspect, because you, you're you running it yourself, right? You're worried about the one roof, the four tenants, the four HVACs, whatever the case is. It's also a lot easier to understand the numbers, right? As Dan mentioned, there's typically less expenses involved, right? So there's less, um, when, when we look at our owner statements, like income, rent, right? Only one mortgage, right? Maybe three incomes or three rent checks or four rent checks that you have to deal with. There's probably one roof repair. And so when you're looking at the numbers, it's fairly simple to say, okay, if I put in this much money, this is how much I'm getting back out. Therefore, my return on investment is X, right? You don't really need much software. You don't really need much of a, the experience or crazy type of database entry things to really understand the numbers. So that's a good point or a good pro, if you will, for some of the residential investments. The next thing, the kicker is the secret sauce is the low down payments. Okay. So obviously if it's four units and below, you can buy it as a personal residence and rent out the rest. We love that. But with personal residence type of purchases, you have the beautiful loan types. So a VA loan or a USDA loan will allow you to buy it at 0%. An FHA loan will allow you to buy it at 3.5%. And a conventional loan will allow you to buy it at 5%. It's ridiculous. Now, even if you buy it as a investment property, you may not be able to use one of those beautiful loans, but you could still buy it for about 20%. And we'll get into it on the commercial side, but if you were able to buy an apartment building at 20% down payment, 
That's almost unheard of for those type of products. So in the grand scheme of thing, it is still considered a very low down payment. All right, now let's go ahead and move into apartments, right? So uh, the number one thing, my favorite things, part of the, you know, part of the, the name, right, is the higher cash flow. So when you have apartment complexes, when you have multiple units, um, you're collecting rent from, you know, so many, a bunch of different people. You're collecting rent from a bunch of different people. You don't have to worry so much about vacancies um, because if you're if you got one person missing or one person not paying rent out of 30 units versus one person not paying rent in a single family home, it's a stark difference, right? So that higher cash flow, that higher return um, is extremely important, and, and that's I think that's probably the biggest pro to apartment complex, and that's one of the most uh, attractive things about apartments. Uh, number two easier to scale. And when I say that, I mean those uh, economies of scale, there's, there's things like uh, property management, for example. Um, you might have a property, manage, a property manager that manages your property. You're no longer uh, worrying about trying to collect rent from a bunch of people. Um, on a single family home, if you were to hire a property manager, you might pay 10%, right? Um, on a large commercial property, uh, depending on how large the asset is, you can negotiate that down to, you know, sometimes two, three, four percent. So that that saves you a, a bunch of money in, in the grand scheme of things. Um, also, there's a bunch of different uh, cost efficiencies as well that, that kind of that kind of um, I kind of cover that a little bit when I talked about the property management, but those um, you're, you're just able to save a lot more money. Uh, you have one trash compactor, you have one you know, uh, one large roof is just, it's just um, much more cost efficient uh, than the single family or the residential home. Yeah. And so with those cost efficiencies, it plays right into the next thing, which is how it is actually valued. So with residential homes, as you're aware, they have to be valued based off of similar sales in recent times, right? So basically saying, Hey, in this past six to 12 months, what are some very similar properties like this? So if it's a three unit, so there were some other three units, what did they sell for? Then they take the average of that bad boy and they say, okay, we price this, this three unit or this residential property as such. Well, when it comes to apartment buildings, they're typically valued off of the income approach. And essentially that says all your gross income minus all of your expenses gives you your net operating income. That right there is divided by a cap rate. Don't worry about that, the capitalization rate and then you get this beautiful value. So when you're working on efficiencies, all we have to do to increase the value of these properties is one of two different things, right? Either increase our income or decrease our expenses. Very simple concept, but it allows you to scale just by following those cost efficiencies that Dan mentioned. And the next thing, just like with residential, you got low down payments. Well, on the apartments, it's typically higher down payments, right? Typically, you can find something around 25% down, but probably more often it'll be 30 or, or more uh, as far as a percentage of a down payment. However, because these properties are so big and they run and operate similar to a business, there are a little bit more creative options when it comes to financing apartment buildings. A lot of times people will do syndications, which is essentially pooling together different investors to acquire a property. Sometimes they'll do loan assumptions, right? Meaning that the loan is already there and it's existing. We're just going to go ahead and take over and finish off the operations of the property. So although there it's bigger numbers, a little bit more zeros, there's sometimes some more creative alternatives uh, to apartments. All right, man. And that's pretty much it. So those are some quick facts or quick um, pros to each to the residential and the apartment complexes. Right. So um, hopefully that helps out a little bit. Uh, one really quick thing. I'm sure you guys see our dope ass shirts right now. So make sure you go uh, click the link below if you want some military cash flow uh, merchandise and come check that out. Um, it's pretty cool. So um, outside of that, uh, if you're looking for a realtor, um, make sure to link up with us. We vet our realtors and we make sure they're military friendly and they understand investing. So, um, if you're, if you're about to purchase your first home, make sure to link up with us and, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, hook you up with a, um, hook you up with a realtor. Um, just go to militarycashflow.com and you'll see all the information there. That's pretty much it guys. Buy our
swag. And as always, guys, smash the like button. Go ahead and share this content if you liked it. There's other content that if you want us to talk about or dig into or research or whatever, put it in the comments below. All right. And with that, this is Dan Wynn. And Mike Glassby. Signing off.